this is what a man who's pushing 50 years old that dropped a four foot by eight foot by three quarter inch piece of plywood on his big toe yesterday looks like. This one's going to be a struggle, but I'm going to get through it. I'm just going to have to be seated through the whole thing. Yeah, I love you too. I got to work. Beat it. Scram. Or maybe not. Maybe he's just going to sit here for the whole thing. Listen, I want to talk today about one of my favorite things in the world to talk about, and that's filtration. I could talk about filters in every single video, and the channel would be very boring, but I could do it because I love filters. But today, I don't want to just talk about what my favorite brand of filter is or what my favorite type of filter is. Instead, what I want to talk about is you're setting up an aquarium, whatever size it is, whatever situation it is, we're going to talk about what I believe is the best filter for that situation. You can agree, you can disagree, and guess what? We can still be friends. Me, you, and Carl, we can still hang out. We can still talk about fish, even though we disagree about something. Isn't that wild? All right, I love you, but you got to go because you're too distracting. Am I going to mention my favorite brands and things like that for particular filters that we talk about? Sure, but it's because I have my favorites. It doesn't mean you have to buy that specific brand, and I'm certainly not going to be doing a commercial for all of the filters that I sell. In fact, the majority of the filters that we're going to talk about today, I don't even sell on our website, but you have to know about these filters because they are good options in certain situations. So let's start off with smaller aquariums. Now I could break this down and say nanos, tens, twenties, but here's the thing. Pretty much all of my answers for what is the best filtration for an aquarium is going to be the same dependent on the situation from nothing to 40 gallons. So we're going to define small aquariums as 40 gallons and lower. Now this is going to totally be dependent on what the aquarium is. Once we get to larger tanks, I think that changes. I think there's pretty much like standards when it comes to large aquariums. But with smaller aquariums, 40 gallons or less, a lot of the decisions have to do with what's going on in the tank. Is it a shrimp tank? Is it a single beta tank? Is it a community tank? Do you have live plants? All of these different factors are gonna play a role in your decision of what kind of filter to get. So let's break down each individual situation. First being the beta or shrimp tank, uh, or I guess you could even say fry tank. These are gonna be tanks that you want filtration in, but you don't want a ton of movement going in. You're gonna want something that's gonna be easy, low flow, but yet gets the job done. And in my opinion, when we're talking about really, really small tanks, five, 10, 15, I'm not going to call 20 gallons really, really small. I'm just going to call 20s, 29s, and 40s small. Those will be small. Not tiny, but 15 and smaller is going to be tiny. I personally believe there is no better situation or no better filter to have in that situation than a sponge filter. Now, I just did a podcast episode with my good friend Jason Adams from Primetime Aquatics the Tank Talk podcast. If you haven't heard about it, I'll put a link. I've been doing this 10 years, 12 years. I still haven't figured out what corner to point to, but I'll put whatever corner it is, I'll put a card up there to that podcast. Check it out. Let us know what you think. But we talked all about sponge filters and it was Jason's episode. And he talked about a lot of the cons when it comes to sponge filters. But one of the points that I made in that video and Jason agreed was in the right situation, sponge filters are perfect. And in my opinion, when we're talking about these tiny tanks that you don't want to blow fish all over the place, you want things to be still kind of, but still moving and still filtered, I think a sponge filter is great for that. The good, uh, the good thing about them is they are very efficient. They do work very well, particularly with small tanks. The cons are, well, it's a big, ugly sponge in your aquarium. There's no getting around that, and you can't really hide it 
behind a bunch of plants and stuff like that, because then you'll just block the flow going into it, making it completely useless. So it does have to be kind of in the open. And I've never seen a, an attractive sponge filter. And I sell like four different styles of sponge filters. I'm sitting here telling you, none of them are beautiful filters. Are they ugly? Yeah. Do they work? Yes, they certainly do. And in that situation, you're going to be absolutely loving it. Now, when you move up to uh, not so small, you know, they're a little bit bigger. They're not considered nanos, but they're still considered small, like your 10s, your 15s, <clears throat> 20 is borderline. I do think you're going to want to involve some type of power situation there, unless we're talking about the same kind of a tank. I've got a 20 gallon shrimp tank. Lisa's got 20 gallon shrimp tanks. So for that, I'm going to want the same thing. I'm going to want a filter that is low flow, but yet still gets the job done. And a sponge filter is certainly going to take care of that. But when you get into larger tanks, larger of the smaller tanks, I hope I'm making sense here. There are some really good options, power options that are going to work really well. One of my favorites. Yes, I do sell this one. The Shark Pro. A Shark Pro 500 in one of those tanks is going to be light years better than a sponge filter. It's way better than a sponge filter. And I don't care what anybody says because you have all of those options. You have the options of different media and stuff like that that you can put in there. You have options what type of flow you want. You can adjust the flow. You can also adjust the type of flow, whether it be a spray bar or just a constant directional flow, whichever way you want it, you have a lot of options there. And if you need to keep the water still, you know, not, not moving really, really fast, you can turn it way down. Now, I am a retailer for CJ. I sell the Shark Pro. I think it's the best canister, internal canister filter on the market, which is why I sell it. Five-year warranty. Come on, give me a break. It's the best filter out there. I think it would be great in a situation like this, even if it's a tank that you need slow, low flow on, like that beta tank, like that shrimp tank, stuff like that. Turn that flow down, but you still get all of the options like the chemical filtration, the biomedia, all of that kind of stuff. You got it all in there. It's just a win-win. Now, <clears throat> if you're keeping just a bunch of community fish and they don't particularly care about the flow. You don't have live plants in there. You, you can just blow things around in there, no problem at all. Then sure, move up to a hang on the back filter. But even the smallest version of a lot of the hang on the back filters out there are pretty strong for a tank that size. But I am a hang on the back filter junkie. I absolutely love them. I'm a power filter junkie. Uh, to me, every aquarium should have a power filter in it. So I'm not gonna be mad at you if you get a hang on the back filter for aquariums that small. Uh, just make sure you get one of the smallest ones that they have available. I get a lot of emails from people because we sell the title filters from Seachem. Again, best hang on the back filter on the market and I'll say it to your face. I get a lot of people that email and say, is it okay if I put a Title 35 on my 10 gallon tank? And I'm like, I understand why you're saying that because the 35 is the smallest version of the Title filter, but man, you're gonna be blowing those fish around like crazy. It's gonna be the movie Twister, which they should not have made a new one of, by the way. I will not be watching that movie, but anyway, listen. The Title 35 for a 10 gallon tank is too strong and a lot of hang on the back filters on tanks that small are going to be too strong. So you might want to stay away from the Seachem Title. Can't believe those words are coming out of my mouth, but they are because they're just too strong for small aquariums like that and especially small for nanos. I've gotten emails, can I put a Title 55 on a 20 gallon and stuff like I understand it. But let's not get carried away. When we're talking about a small aquarium like that, you most likely want low flow, but you still want efficiency. So the smallest hang on the back available, uh, a internal canister filter like the Shark Pro, but Fluval has one. 
I think Aquion has one. There's a lot of internal filters out there. I think those are absolutely fabulous because of all of the options that you have and a sponge filter will work fine too. But what if we move up? What if we go to the next level, which I would consider 40 gallons to like 90 gallons. Those I'm gonna call medium aquariums. Now, this is where I might spark a little bit of controversy because there are people out there that love their filter types and they will die by their filter types. But I personally believe when you get from 40 gallons up to 90 gallons, you are passing what I am comfortable to filter with a sponge filter only. If you have a hang on the back filter and you want to supplement, get a little bit of more mechanical filtration with the sponge filter, sure, go ahead and add one. But I believe when you're 40 gallons and up, I think you have to go power filter. That's just my opinion. I have actually done 55 gallon tanks with two big giant sponge filters. It worked but I didn't like it because those sponge filters are huge and they're ugly and it's just not something that I like seeing in my big tanks. So in my opinion, I do believe unless you're using it as supplemental filtration, I would stay away from sponge filters. We're gonna want something that's got some power. But again, this is going to completely depend on your situation because if you have a 55 gallon heavily planted angel aquarium that has a couple of neon tetras and some quarry cats and stuff like that, I'm going to recommend a very different type of filter than if you have a bunch of imbunas in that 55 gallon or just a bunch of community fish, rock work, no plants or anything like that. I'm going to recommend something completely different. But what about that first scenario of angels heavily planted community fish? Doesn't have to be angels, but really any community fish in a heavily planted aquarium. I know there's gonna be people that are gonna disagree with me and that's fine. Like I said in the beginning of the video, we can still be friends. I'm still gonna recommend a hang on the back filter. Hang on the back filters are easy to maintain. All of them, not just the Seachem title. They're all easy to maintain. You've got all of the options. You can put that input somewhere, take it down the back wall as far as you can on the tank and it kind of blends in with the background. It's not this big, ugly sponge in there. It's gonna work really, really well. They're super efficient. Every hang on the back filter out there is good. Some are better than others, but they're all good. And it's gonna be enough to handle the tank for the load that you have on it. You have plants in there, which are helping keep things healthy in there for the aquarium, for the fish, not, well, and the aquarium, but. You understand what I'm saying. The plants are acting like another form of filtration. So you're getting that kind of double whammy there. It's kind of like having a hang on the back and the supplemental sponge filter, except it's plants instead of sponge filter. And that's a much more attractive and much more efficient way to go. I would tell people, you have that heavily planted aquarium. You got the community fish swimming around in there. Maybe you're I don't, who cares? It doesn't matter what you have in there. You got a bunch of community fish in there and a bunch of plants. I'm going to say a hang on the back filter. If you move up to a canister or something like that in that situation, I think that might be overkill. But what if you have that larger aquarium in the medium category that the, the 55 to 90, actually let's say 75 to 90 is going to be the large end of the medium bracket and then 40 and 55 would be the smaller who cares what if you have a completely different situation going on in there what if you've got south american cichlids maybe some severums don't put oscars in a 55 gallon tank i have told people worst case scenario 75 and up i mean it's not perfect but it'll work i've done it before but your smaller south american cichlids you might be keeping in a 75 gallon tank 90 and you don't have a bunch of plants in there because they would just tear them up. Not all South American cichlids do that, but you don't have that option with your particular fish. You have big heavy hitter fish in that tank that produce a ton of waste, which is why I call them heavy hitters. They're destructive to the decor in the tank. It's their tank and you just have to deal with that like I have to do with this tank. You are gonna want something even more powerful than a hang on the back. 
this is where you're going to want to maybe double up on the hang on the backs. That's not crazy. Put a hang on the back on each end. It's a lot of filtration, but it'll work because you have that extra power. You have those extra options for different media that you can put in there. You can double up on the sponges. You can do all of those things. But I do still think particularly when we're talking about these big heavy hitter cichlids, we want power. Sponge filters are just not going to cut it. It's just not going to work because they need more than that. I've struggled with this tank since the day I got it, even when my Oscars were this big. And that's a big tank. If you follow this channel, you understand my struggles that I've had with this tank. It's getting better. But when you have heavy hitters in an aquarium, it is a constant battle to keep it looking nice or even close to being nice. And a sponge filter is just not going to do that for you. You need something more powerful. You need something that's more efficient and that has more options. Doubling up on a hang on the back filter is a perfectly good option. But what about moving up to the canister filter? This is where I would definitely tell you that upgrading to a canister filter will certainly do the job. You got the big ones like the FX series. Don't go putting an FX6 on a 55 gallon aquarium. That's a bit extreme, but they have the FX2 now. Fluval also has their 07 line, which is great. I think the 407 is probably the one that you would want for that size tank. They have options. I don't sell these filters, so I'm not doing a sales pitch. Marine Land has a great canister filter for smaller aquariums. And when I say smaller aquariums, I mean tanks that are not this big, you know, more manageable, the kind of aquarium you could have in your living room. Marine Land has some great options for filters for there. And uh, you know what? CJ is coming out with one very soon. I know all the details about it. I know what it's going to be called. I've seen it. It's glorious. But at the time of filming this video, it is not available yet. So that's going to be an option for you in the future too. They're bringing out a filter that's going to compete head to head with the FX series. It's going to have a five-year warranty on it. So if you're watching this in the future, take a look at that. Uh, it's called the Mega Filtra. Take a look at that filter. It's going to be worth it. I haven't used it yet but I've seen it in action. I've seen what the paper says it does. And if it adds up at all to what they're claiming it's going to be, oh boy, it's going to mix things up. But that's mainly for what we're going to be talking about later in the video. When we're talking about the more manageable, more medium sized aquariums, 75, 90, even 55, which 55 is one of my favorite sizes of aquariums, period. I love that size. Uh, you really can go to a canister filter. It probably just doesn't need to be that big and that extreme. Is there such thing as having too much filtration on an aquarium? Yes, but with fish like this, absolutely not. With fish like African cichlids from Malawi, absolutely not. You can blow those fish all over the place. You can put as much filtration as your aquarium will fit and it probably still won't be enough. So with them, the rules are different than if you have that community aquarium with nice, gentle little fish that just like to look pretty and sit around. They're not all over the place. You're not probably not going to want to blow those around with a canister filter. So yeah, canister filters. I love them. I am a huge fan. I've said it on the podcast with Jason on the episode that we did about canister filters. I said it in that video and I'll say it again right to you, to your face. I'm looking at you in your eyes and I'm, I'm telling you this. If I had my way, and if I had all the money, every single aquarium in this fish house, 1,500 square feet of aquarium building we have here, every single one of them would be run off of canister filters. They'd be big ones for tanks like this, and there would be multiples, but I would do that because I love how efficient they are. I love how quiet they are. I won't have to use as much noise cancellation when I edit these videos. Yeah, they're kind of a bear to maintain, but I love them. I, they're my favorite type of filtration, period. And that is what it is. So yes, I'm a little bit biased there. If you have a 90 gallon aquarium with a bunch of African cichlids in it, that's when you're gonna wanna start looking into something like that. Um, but if you're at 40, 50, 40, 55, you have a heavily planted uh, community aquarium, sure, go with a hang on the back filter. 
it's not a problem. You can turn that flow down if you need to. Get a good size one, Title 55, Title 75, uh, Fluval, one, not 110, but I don't know the numbers for Fluvals. Uh, the Marine Land 375, whatever. Look them up for the gallon sizes. The Marine Lands are a great option. The Fluval's a great option. The Title's a great option. Get one that's I always tell people, maybe one step up from the aquarium you have when you're getting into these medium-sized aquariums. So if you have a 40-gallon, don't get the 35, get the 55. It's one step up. You have the 55-gallon aquarium, get the 75-gallon hang on the back filter because you can always turn it down if it's too much. You get all those options, get all the ease of maintenance, all that, and it looks so much better than a sponge filter. But now let's get into the big dogs. Let's get into the aquariums that probably are not going to be sitting in your living room. I'm talking about aquariums like this. I'm talking about my three 240 gallons. I'm not saying three 20, 240 gallons to flex on you or anything. I've collected these over the years. I'm very proud of them. These are probably not aquariums that you're going to have sitting in your living room. You're going to have a room that's dedicated to these big giant aquariums like this. Let me just tell you this, I'm gonna say it right up front. Anybody that would recommend to you to filter aquariums like this with sponge filters, run from that person and never speak to that person again because that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. When you get to aquariums this size, we're it's mandatory that they're gonna be power filters and we're talking about either multiple canisters of the biggest variety or we're talking about a sump filtration system. We have five tanks, one, two, three, four, five, five tanks that are 240 gallons or larger. And all five of those are run off of sump systems because you just kind of have to when your tanks get that big. One sump system that you can set up is gonna cost you less than multiple canister filters. If I was gonna run this tank right here off of nothing but canister filters, I'm not going to lie to you, I'd probably go with three of the biggest version whatever company has. When CJ comes out with their new one, the, the Mega Filtra, I, I, hey, whatever the biggest one is, three of those. That's what I would want on here. Uh, I probably will add canister filters to this when that CJ comes out because I, I just, I've been struggling with that tank for years. I want something to help pick up that poop. but. The sump filtration is, it's glorious. I love it. There's only one drawback to sumps and that is that they're loud. I've never seen a quiet sump filter. There's always water trickling. There's always water moving. And that might be great in your fish room, but in mine, I don't like that. I want them to be quiet. So canisters are the way to go. And again, if I had my way, I would transition all of these to canister filters it would be big, it would cost me as much as a nice automobile would cost to do that, so I'm not gonna do it, but I would definitely do that. The only way I would do that is if a company came along and said, hey, John, we're gonna call you on that and we're gonna give you all of the filters. I would say, uh, did you need my address now? Or, <laughs> sure, I'll do that, that's fine. You wanna send me thousands of dollars worth of canister filters? Sure, let's do it. But until that day happens, until I win that lottery, no, I'm gonna stick with what I've got and what I have is great, which is the sump filtration. Sumps, canisters, when you're at that 90 gallon or, or I guess the next step up is like a 110 and up, this is where they're gonna become mandatory. Yeah, you can double up on, hang on the backs. You got yourself a six foot 125, you put two Tidal 110s, two AquaClear 110s, two Penguin 375 Emperor, whatever. You're, it's mandatory that you're gonna need power, you're gonna need options, you're gonna need big flow, because even if it's a planted tank, that's a lot of water to process. You're not gonna be able to have a 300 gallon aquarium where the water is completely stagnant. It's just not, it's not gonna be a pleasing thing your room is going to reek because it's going to be that stagnant water. You're going to have mosquitoes. It's going to be dirty. It's, it's just going to be a nightmare. You're going to want water moving in that tank regardless of what you have in it. And you're going to be wanting to move it quite a bit because that's a lot of water 
to process, and there's no better way of doing that regardless of what you have in the tank. There's no better way of doing it than canisters or sumps. Again, that's mandatory. I hope that helps you in your quest to figure out what kind of a filter you need for your aquarium. Uh, I, I know it might have sounded like I hate some filters, and I don't hate any filter. Listen, I believe this from the bottom of my heart. Whatever filter you have on your aquarium, if it's working and your fish are happy and they're healthy, that's the best filter in the world. I am not going to be mad at you no matter what kind of filter you choose. I might make fun of you a little bit if you got a big giant tank with a bunch of stupid sponge filters in it. Might make fun of you, but that doesn't mean that it's bad. It just means I don't like it. And you know what? We can like different things, but yet still be friends. It's an interesting concept, I know, but we can do that. I don't want to keep rambling. I know I've rambled enough. I hope this has helped you out uh, a little bit, at least, in understanding what kind of filter you should get. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and dealing with me as I'm sitting here with this bum foot. I don't know how long that's going to be, but I'm not enjoying it. That's for sure. I'm just going to have to sit down and talk to you, and we'll get through it. I know I will. I, I, I can get through it. I got ponds to build. I got all kinds of stuff to do. I can't be messing around sitting on my butt for weeks. No, can't do that. But anyway, thank you for keeping me company while I'm miserable with this foot. And I'll see you next week.